Daniel, Nestor. So I would love to welcome you guys to our first doubles match psychology uh, virtual workshop with former world number one, Daniel Nestor. Um, I'm your host, Yoros Budimak, and our presentation will take about 60 minutes, followed by 30 minutes of Q&A from you guys. Given that we are not on court, we have some pictures and designs that we will share with you in order to illustrate the teaching points. And please know that today is, is not how to hit the ball. We're talking exactly about the positioning and the tactics and the strategies the pros use. A big thank you to Daniel. I really can't say enough. Um, he's a great guy and I couldn't be more excited to, to welcome him today um, to this workshop. Uh, with his experience. It's unbelievable. Um, I'm just looking at his, his biography and I'll, I'll note some of his highlights. Uh, as of March 2018, he was the 10th most for most ATP titles in the Open Era history. In January 2016, Daniel became the first doubles player in the ATP history to win a thousand matches. He was continuously ranked in the top 100 in doubles from 1999, or sorry, 1994 to 2018. That's a total of 1,134 consecutive weeks. It's longer than some of you guys may have been alive. Um, he's won 91 doubles titles with 11 different partners, including a gold medal at the 2000 Summer Olympics, four ATP World Tour titles, World Tour Finals, and eight Grand Slam men's double titles. Daniel also holds four Grand Slam mixed doubles titles, the Australian Open in 2007, 2011, 2014, and Wimbledon in 2013. He became the world number one ranked doubles player in the world in August, 2002. And he was actually ranked number 58 in singles as well. And this was in August, 1999. Daniel, can you please turn on your camera for us to get going here? All right, we practiced this a few times. Let's see if you can. It's the it's giving me that uh, the host has asked you to start the video. Okay. All right, Am there, there it is. You Hello. are there. Your are finger you? your finger was there. Good. How are you? Good. How is Toronto? Not bad. Can't complain. We've had uh, you know pretty good summer and pretty good weather uh, so far this fall. So. I haven't nice. got to work with it yet. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, the snow is not far away, is it? <laughs> no, for sure. We've been, we're, we've been teased. We've been teased, right. Um, awesome. Well, uh, again, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. I know I'm super excited. This hour will fly by, and, and I'd love to get started here with you, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I will uh, just go through what we're going to work on today and what we're going to discuss. We're going to yeah. talk about what is a successful doubles player. We will look at uh, some of the routines you used in your competitive matches, uh, the four matches and how you prepared well for them, uh, the communication during them, uh, movement and positioning on courts while you were playing, uh, as well as a match wrap up and debriefing and then the Q&A. We'll keep the debriefing a, a bit shorter than the rest, yeah. but we'll, we'll still go through that. Okay. So tell me, uh, what does it take to be a successful doubles, doubles player? Well, uh, you know, choosing the right partner is obviously the, the, the very important, but uh, when yeah. it comes to yourself, uh, you know, you, you're generally, uh, you know, pretty skilled at the net, uh, good reflexes, um, you know, ready to, to be aggressive out there because the doubles points do last uh, quite a bit shorter than the singles points. So you really have to go for your shots mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, good serve, good return and, uh, you know, basically a, a controlled aggression type uh, mentality out there. Nice. So uh, do you prefer the serving side of things or the returning side of things? If I may ask. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, generally, uh, yeah. you know, I would say teams are holding serve, you know, 80, 90% of the time. So it's, it's always nice to have the ball in your hand, but uh, it is important to, to be able to put balls in play, especially as uh, the serve has evolved into such a weapon now. So, you know, uh, I, I would say the teams are able to put the most balls in play and the most returns in play at the highest levels are, are the ones that uh, are winning the biggest tournaments. Uh, everyone's generally serving well nowadays, but uh, the ones who are, are returning the best, uh, I would say mm -hmm. probably put themselves in the best position to win. And tell me a little bit more about the controlled aggression. We see that often in club doubles, especially the returner will go for something really big early in the point. Yeah. How do you manage controlled aggression and what does it mean to you? 
Well, to me, it means just a, an attitude of, you know, going for your shots, uh, you know, making a commitment to playing a certain way. I mean, everyone knows themselves, their game style, what works for them. And it's trying to implement that uh, in a match, right? I, I mean, you, you have so signs of choking can be, you know, uh, you know, letting up, you know, not finishing your shots, uh, you know, just, just basically playing safe and, and uh, you know, really, you know, kind of, you know, being very apprehensive on the court. And then, but another sign of choking can also be overhitting, right? You're, you're trying to do too much with the shot. You're trying to win the point, uh, you know, too early and, you know, just, just kamikaze type uh, approach, which also can be detrimental. So it's, uh, it's just a, a mentality of, of knowing yourself and, you know, playing to win. I mean, generally, I think at, at all levels, if, if you, if you're playing to win a match rather than waiting for things to happen, you're going to, you're going to do better than, than, you know, more reactionary, just, you know, kind of seeing how things are going, not having a plan, just trying to make the ball, you know, that, that generally doesn't work. I think if you, if you have a mindset of, of making things happen, you're in a, a better situation for sure. Nice. Thank you. Um, let's, let's look at what you were doing before the match, uh, before matches began. And, and of course, there's some matches that would be different to others, but if you can generalize it, what would be some of the key points that you used uh, to help you perform? Yeah, I mean, can, uh, sorry if you don't mind, just bring the camera down a little bit so we can see your face. There you go. That's perfect. Um, up or down? That's it. That? Yeah, up. Perfect. Yeah, sorry. I'm no, no problem. Right. Um, yeah, so everyone approaches things differently. For me, you know, I was probably a little more emotional at times than others. So I would definitely uh, try and get a good night's sleep before. And, and that would mean that uh, I wouldn't really focus on the upcoming match uh, until the day of. So I'd, uh, you know, try and sleep as well as I could. And then the day of, you know, obviously get a good meal in the morning. And, you know, I had a nervous stomach, so I wouldn't eat too too close to a match. Uh, I'd try to keep things very light and, and hydrate very well. That was very important for me. Uh, you know, I did have some problems with cramping throughout my career, especially in the hot humid weather. So hydration was key, having uh, the powders and and really focusing on eating well uh, was important. And then obviously you're, uh, you're having a, a pre-match warm-up, a uh, good stretch, and then, you know, leave yourself an hour, an hour and a half at least to, to wind down and, and mentally prepare, go over game plan, relax a little bit, uh, you know, just to take your mind uh, off from, from the task for a little bit and then, then get ready to go. Nice. And so uh, how did you deal with jet lag and traveling across the world? Uh, and how did that affect your pre-match routine when you arrived somewhere and it was, you know, day and night were switched? Yeah, I mean, that was a, a popular question considering I, I was always playing with partners from different countries. So they were wondering how we practice together. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the most important thing for me was getting to a tournament early. And, you know, when I was wherever I was in, in off time, uh, not at a tournament, I would just stay in shape but playing a lot of tennis, uh, you know, wasn't the most important thing away from tournaments. It was more about uh, just, you know, relaxing and, and staying in shape. And then I would try to get to the tournaments early and then really get acclimatized and used to the conditions. And, and jet lag was tough. Listen, I, I can't lie. I, was, I wasn't a great sleeper, but, uh, you know, I would just deal with it. I, I definitely didn't want to rely on medication to, to, you know, try and have a good night's sleep. I was just trying to deal with it, try and stay in the same routine. Definitely. Uh, when I would arrive at a new destination, not, you know, you have, <laughs> you can get there and you can be dead tired, like at noon and you want to sleep all day, but you know, that's the worst thing. So I, I would really try and stay awake uh, as long as I could, uh, um, you know, that first night, second night. And then, uh, and then, you know, by the time uh, the, the tournament rolls around, you're, you're, you're definitely more adjusted. And, and can you tell, uh, tell us a little bit about you know, what are some conversations you're having with your partner going into a match? You know, how much emphasis is there on, on your game plan versus who are you playing against that day? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, that's obviously really important. It's important to know your opponents very well, do a little bit of research, you know, talk to some guys in the locker room um, as to some of their tendencies, if you haven't played them before, but a lot of the guys you've, you've played uh, many times. So it's important to have in the back of your mind, some of the things that they do well, but I think, I can say this, I, I would imagine for all levels, I mean, you're, you're more focused more on yourself, what you can control, you know, going over some things that you like to do well, going into a match, you know, focusing on going through your shots and, and playing your game. And I mean, how many times 
in your life as as a tennis player when you play when you play well you do you lose usually if you play well you win right so you're increasing your chances by winning by playing your game which i think is the most important thing while also recognizing what your part what your opponents are are made of uh obviously they have tendencies and, and you want to exploit some of those and, and be prepared for those but mm -hmm. uh, i think it's more about you and preparing yourself which is really all you can control anyway and uh and you know having that uh, approach i think there's a huge point guys um yeah just looking at what happens before the match and how much focus can we have on our on our own game and and, and the things we can control <laughs>